Hello, my friends. I'm Clover, and this is my walkthrough for the gas puzzle that was originally posted by Philip Newman on June 14th, 2024. It is called Thermodynamic Square. So what do we have here? And first of all, I apologize for this video being a couple of days late. I had kind of a challenging schedule the other day, and I wanted to prioritize just getting my own puzzle out to you guys. I figured I would record this one later. So this is a couple of days behind, but there's still a link to the puzzle down below if you haven't seen it yet, so feel free to check that out. So we have normal Sudoku rules, so we're placing the digits 1 through 9 once each in each row, each column, and each heavily outlined 3 by 3 region. Then we also have thermometers, and in Sudoku, thermometers tell you that the digits have to increase as we travel along the line, starting at the round bulb end and going towards the other end. They don't necessarily have to increase in consecutive order. There can be gaps, but they do have to always increase as you travel along the line. And the first thing I notice in this particular puzzle is that this thermometer is quite long, but it already has two of the smallest digits excluded from the bulb. So the smallest digit has to be at least a three. And I want to check what happens if we make it a three. And it turns out if we make it a three, we actually have to go all the way up to nine to finish it. So this tells us this can't be anything bigger than three either. So that has to be exactly three, which fills in the rest of the thermo and also tells us that's a one. That gives us only one degree of freedom on these two vertical thermos. So let's look at these one at a time. So this one, we have to start with either one or two then two or four, and you can already see what's going to happen here, then four or five, five or six, six or seven, seven or eight, because there's a nine already in the column. And the way I knew immediately that there were exactly, there was exactly one degree of freedom, to be clear, is that I had exactly one cell that was not on the thermo that hadn't been filled in yet. And so that is where my one degree of freedom is coming from. So this eight here tells me that that's a seven, and because my digits have to increase along the thermo, I can actually fill in the rest of it now. And now I know that is an eight. Now I also have two degrees of freedom here. This will be two or four, or sorry, one degree of freedom there. Um, this will be two or four, four or five, five or six, six or seven, seven or eight, and eight or nine. Now this is a little bit trickier to fill in. I do get a two right here, but I'm going to have to leave the rest of it for the time being. There is some stuff that I could maybe do using this seven to argue that there's a seven in one of those cells, but I'm going to leave that because this is gas. Let's get the straightforward stuff first. This thermo now only has one degree of freedom, so that will be a three or five, five or six, six or seven, seven or eight, eight or nine. And what I'm doing to express that one degree of freedom is I'm just pencil marking two digits into each possible position along the thermometer. And that shows me right away this can't be a five because of the five in the column, so that will be six, seven, eight, nine in that order. Now this will be a three or a five also because those are the only two digits remaining in the row, that makes this a four. Okay, now these will be 3, 5, and 7 in some order. This can't be a 3 because it is the last cell on a length 4 thermometer, and we can't start the thermometer with anything smaller than 1. So there we go. Now what? So what do we have that we still need to place here? So we have 6 and 8 in both of these rows, which means the only places we can put a 6 or 8 in region 9 are going to be there and there. And now we also know that these are going to be 7 and 9 because those are the last two digits in region 9. So that'll be a 7 and that will be a 9. This now can't be a 7. These cells are going to contain 2, 4, 5, and 6. This can't be a 2 or 4 because this thermometer is fairly lengthy. We can't have a 2 or 4 on the end of a length 5 thermometer. And actually we can't have a 6 either because there's a 6 in the column. So that's going to be a 5, which will make the whole thermometer minimal. So there's no 5 in these cells. This also can't be a 2 or a 4, because those are in the row already. And then this can't be a 4, because there's a 4 in the column. So we finished that entire region. This is a 5 now, which tells us this is a 7. And because all of our remaining cells that aren't known in this column are on the thermometer, that means we're down to no degrees of freedom, and we can just pencil them in, because we know what order they go in because of the direction of the thermometer. Now we need 7 and 9 here. So the 9 in the row makes that a 7, and in fact the 7 kind of bounces back and makes that an 8, which makes this a 9. So that will now be an 8 to finish row 3. That's now a 6 and an 8. These two cells have to contain a 5 and a 6, and that's kind of fun because we now have a 5-6 pair here, which tells us this must be a 7. It can't be a 5 or a 6. These cells will contain 1, 8, and 9, and I can't resolve those yet. So now vertically here, this needs to be 2 or 3, this is 3 or 5, and this is 5 or 6, because again I have only one degree of freedom, um, because this is the only cell that's not on that thermometer in that column that hasn't been filled in yet. 
And now that is useful in a couple ways. I can look at this five, six pair and say, therefore, that's a three and a two. And then that tells me that's a five and resolves this five, six pair entirely. Now this five gives me a six here and a five. These will be a one and a four to finish the region. And now the very last thing we're going to look at is this tiny little thermometer right here. It has to have a one on it somewhere because there's no one in the row. So the one can only go in the bulb. It has to have a nine on it somewhere. There's no nine in the row. So the nine can only go in the very end. Can't go in the middle. There's nothing bigger than nine. And that means we're left with a three, five pair. But because this is a three, I can't place a three on the middle of the thermometer. So that will be my five. These will now be two, three, and four. So eliminate four, three, and two here. And let's finish off that middle region with classic Sudoku techniques. So we need three, four, and five in this row. Five can't go in those cells because of these five. So it goes here. That three it resolves. And then that four is going to resolve this. In this row, I'm going to need one, six, and eight. These can't be sixes. This can't be a one. So we are resolved. And finally, I need a two, seven, and nine here. This can't be seven or nine. That's going to be a nine and a seven. And we can just pencil in the remainder. And that is how you solve June 14th's gas by Philip Newman called Thermodynamic Square. Hope you enjoyed that one. Check out the link to solve it in the description of this video, and I will catch you next time.